Mr. M presents. Order of Operations featuring Bedmass. Hi everybody. In this video we're going to take a look at solving complex expressions using order of operations. Now sometimes when you have a really complex math problem with lots of different operations in it, uh, you have to solve things in a certain order in order to get the correct answer. If you do it simply from left to right like you read, uh, it won't work out quite right. You'll get some incorrect work because certain things have to be completed before other steps. To help us remember how to do this, we've invented a phrase and it's called bed mass. It's B-E-D-M-A-S, as you see at the top. This is our reminder about how to do steps in, a, in an, a really complex equation, expression. So if you follow this and you follow it carefully, you shouldn't have too much difficulty solving any of these expressions properly. Just take a look. Bra B stands for brackets. Brackets basically means anything within those brackets, or what in language we call parentheses. In this case, it's 5 take away 3. We would have to solve that first if we were doing a question that involved that. The E stands for exponents. So our next step after we've completed all the brackets is any exponent that we see. So any exponent that we see has to be Im immediately solved. The next step we have is D for division and M for multiplication. It means that if we have any multiplication or division in the question whatsoever, those are our next steps. What we have to remember about division and multiplication, however, is that there is no preference. They are one step together. So if I happen to see multiplication first, I could solve that before division. We could just as easily call this BEMDAS, but maybe bed mass sounds better. So any division or multiplication, no matter what you see first, you can do. The last steps are addition and subtraction. So any addition and subtraction we see. And just like the division and multiplication, we could easily reverse these. So subtraction can happen before addition and addition can happen before subtraction. They just can't happen before division and multiplication and none of those can happen before exponents and none of that can happen before brackets. So let's take a look on the next page here and see uh, how we can put this to action with a real equation. So here we have a fairly complex number expression with some brackets, some multiplication, some addition, some exponents, some division, some subtra subtraction. It's got everything in it. So how do we do this in the correct order? Well, as we said before, the first thing we have to worry about are is any expressions and calculations within the brackets. So as you can see here, I do have two sets of brackets and there is calculations inside those that have to be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve those and leave the rest of the equation correct. What I would recommend that you always do is write out the entire next step of the equation with the corrected parts. Don't uh, take shortcuts. So 3 plus 3 is 6 and that's still going to be times 2 plus 4 to the exponent 2 divided by and then uh, that's going to be divided by 4 subtract 2 which is 2. So now we've taken our next step here and we're ready to move ahead in the equation. Our next step is going to be any exponents we see and sure enough we do have one 4 to the exponent 2. So I'm now going to solve that 4 to the exponent 2 is like 4 times 4 which is 16 so my expression is now going to be 6 times 2 plus 16 divided by 2. Our next step is now to look and see if we have any division or multiplication. Remember, we do those together in the order we see them. So I don't have to search out the division first, then the multiplication. I can do whatever one I see first. And sure enough, I have a multiplication expression right there and a division expression there. So I can do them in that order. So 6 multiplied by 2 is 12 plus 16 divided by 2, which is 8. And I'm almost done. Our final step is to look for any addition or subtraction we see. Once again, I do those in the order I see them, not necessarily addition before subtraction. In this case, I only have addition. There is no more subtraction left in this equation. So my final answer is 12 plus 8 equals 20. And the answer to that very complex expression you saw at the beginning is 20. 
So we've made it look like it's pretty simple to follow the rules, and often it is. And if you do follow them, you can easily solve any question, but some of them, you know, can be appear pretty tricky. So let's take a look at one here where there's, uh, you know, something that you're going to have to figure out a little bit. So for example, in this expression, there's a large bracket with quite a bit going on inside of it right here. So I have to think carefully, how do I solve the different parts of the equation inside the bracket? Since I am going to do the bracket first, but there's a lot to do. What do I choose? Well, what I have to keep in mind is I still follow my rules. So we know that brackets happen first, and when I look inside this bracket, I go to the next possible step. So it's bed mass, right? B E D M A S. So I look at my bracket and I say, do I have any exponents inside my bracket? And I do. So my next step is to continue the bracket. I still leave it. 3 times 3 plus, and I solve the exponent that I've got here. 3 to the power of 2, that's 3 times 3, which is 9. And still keep room to remember to add my 2 at the end. Now I can go to the next step in my bracket, which is division and multiplication, and that's here, 3 times 3. So my new expression is going to be 9, 3 times 3, plus 9, plus 2. So now I finish what's inside the bracket, and that's going to equal 18 plus 2, which equals 20. So what I really had to think about was, of the different things that are going on in this bracket, what do I do first, what do I do second, and so on. This type of expression is sometimes tricky for students because I've got brackets right here, but I've also got an exponent attached right to the bracket. It's not on a separate number. So my next thought is, what do I have to do here? Well, I still follow my rules. So I still say, what's inside the bracket, then the exponent. So I say 4 plus 2, which is 6, to the exponent 2, which equals simply like regular 6 to the exponent 2, which is 6 times 6, which equals 36. It's important that I follow the rules. As you can see, if I had done um, the numbers in a different way, if I had done 4 squared plus 2 squared, like this, I would have wound up with 16 plus 4, which would have equaled 20. So I would have got a pretty different answer. So it's really important that I follow my rules and I don't do things out of order. So I always do what's in the bracket, even if there's an exponent attached. The other one that sometimes throws students off is if I have something multiplied by a bracket here, right? There's a bracket right here. So what do I do? Do I multiply times 7 and try and figure it out? Do I do the other parts first? You still solve what's inside the bracket. So my number is going to be 3 times 7 take away 2 squared is 4, right? So I'm solving my exponent first. That gives me 4. And then I'm still doing, even though it's subtraction and not multiplication, so even though the subtraction usually comes last, it's inside the bracket here. So I'm still doing 3 times 7 take away 4, which is 3. And 3 times 3 equals 9. So I'm still following that bed mass order. I just have to be very careful about how I apply it. So before we leave, let's go to the next page and try a complex one. You can give it a pause, give it a shot, and then we'll try and solve it together. Okay, so here's a complex expression. It's got a little bit of everything, so take a pause now, try to solve it yourself, and let's come back and check answers together. Okay, so let's see how you did. Hopefully you remembered that it starts as bed mass with that brackets, and sure enough, we do have one set of brackets here, so I'm going to make sure I solve that. So my next way of writing this is going to be 5 plus, and then I'm going to keep that number inside the brackets. 5 take away 1 gives me 4. Keep that. Keep my exponent. Don't forget that. Got to make sure we put that back. Plus 5 multiplied by 3. Okay? So now I'm uh, moving along. I kept the brackets in this case uh, just as a little reminder that I still have to do that exponent. I, I don't need them here. I could have just written 4 to the exponent 2 if I wanted to. So next step, what do I have to do? Well, 
I have to remember that it's bed, so BE, exponents are next, and I do have an exponent, as I just said, right here. So I have to make sure I solve that next. So 4 to the power of 2 is 4 times 4, which is 16. So now I'm going to rewrite the question as 5 plus 16 plus 5 times 3. Okay, so moving along pretty nicely. The next part is my D DM, bed de mass. So that means any division or multiplication I see. I don't have any division here, but I do have multiplication. 5 times 3, which equals 15. So the next way I'm going to write this is 5 plus 16 plus 15. Now, I'm almost done because I'm down to my addition and subtraction, and as you can see, I have no subtraction. I do have two steps of addition, and when I do have that, I just do them in the order I see them from left to right. So, I have 5 plus 16, which I'll do first, plus 15. So, I can write it all in one go if I want. Uh, so, I can simply say 5 plus 16 is 21, plus 5, 15 is 31, 36, or I can say 5 plus 16 is... 21, whoops, 21 plus 15, and 21 plus 15 equals 36. So either way, I can write it out either in one stretch like that, or I can do one more step and get my 21. So I hope you got that. I hope it made sense. If you follow the bed mass rules carefully, you can solve the most complex expressions. Sometimes they'll take a long time, but you will always get to the right answer as long as you're super careful to follow those steps in the correct order. Good luck!